Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I was watching this video on YouTube and it's really interesting. This guy did a very nice job. He fabricated this crane and if we go quickly through the process, he explained it step by step. And in the end, he lifted this lathe machine on it, which is really impressive. So here's his channel and I will put the link of his video in the description so you can see the process of fabricating this kind of crane. And uh, what we will do now is that we will try to model something very close to this crane in SolidWorks. We will provide some dimensions since we don't have dimensions here. I'll try my best to have some close dimensions to the ones he used. And in the end we will run finite element analysis so we can test the crane and see how much load it can withstand. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS and start. Let's start with a sketch on the front. And here I will start with a line. And the length of this line will be 3000 millimeters. And then I draw a line here. And this angle should be 45. And then this distance should be 500. Then I draw a midpoint line, start here, and make it coincident with this line, and set this distance to be equal to this one. And finally, select mirror entities. Select this line and mirror it about this line here. Once done, hit OK. Then finish the sketch. Now I want to activate the Weldments tab. And then select Structural Member and select the ISO standard. And here you will find Tube Square. I want to use 100 by 100 by 3.2. So this will be the first segment. And then select new group and select this line. Then go down and select locate a profile. Then rotate this one and make sure to select this point in the middle. Because I want this length to be 3 meters. So I took this down. So the length of this will be 3 meters. Then select new group and select this line. And select this one. Now hit OK and let's double check the connection. Here it's correct and here it's correct, here and here. Now finally we need to have a straight cut here in the bottom. To do so select reference geometry plane and from here open this menu and select top then hold control and select this point here. After that, select Trim Extend. For bodies to be trimmed, I want to trim this one and this one. And for the trimming boundary, I want to make sure to select Face or Plane and then select this one. Now everything is OK. After that, select this face and the starter sketch here. And then select Center Rectangle. And here I want this to be 200 and this to be 400. Then select this point, hold control, select this line and then make midpoint. Once done with this, finish the sketch and let's extrude this. And I think 10 millimeters thickness will be enough and make sure not to select merge result. Once done with this, go back to Features and select Mirror and from here select Bodies to Mirror, then select this plate and for the Face to Mirror About I want this one. 
So now we have two plates. After that, select Reference Geometry Plane and make sure to select the front and set this to 1400, then hit OK. Then select Mirror and for the bodies to mirror, make sure to select everything and for the mirror plan should be this one. Then hit OK. And now I don't want to show this one and I don't want to show this one. After that, once again, select the right plane and simply snap to this point and snap to this point here and then draw another line snap to this point and to this point. Once done with these, go to Waldman's, then select Structure Remember and for the type, make sure to go to the ISO and here the type should be rectangular and I want to use 120 by 80 by 3, this one. Then select this line and since we want more inertia in this direction, we need to flip this direction. So I want to rotate this by 90 degrees, then locate a profile and select this midpoint. Once done, select new group and select this line. And you need to do the same. And for the profile, I will select this point here. Now you have two options. We can go back to this sketch and add a line, but I will just draw another sketch on the right once again. And here, snap to the intersection point and snap to the intersection point here and place a line. You need to drag this and then select this edge and set them to be coincident. Once done with this, Finish the sketch and once again place the same structural element. Once this is placed, now you need to pattern this one. So go to Features, Linear Pattern, for Direction, select this edge and make sure to select an edge, not a face. For the bodies to be pattern, I want this one. And here, I want 10 copies of this. And instead of spacing and instances, I will use up to reference. And I want to pattern this up to this face here. And I need a reference on the element itself. So I simply select this face. So here, instead of spacing, I will select set number of instances, and I will set this to 10 instances. Then hit OK. Now this is enough for the modeling. If we go back to the original video, as you can see here, we have these wheels, and there is some contact between the wheels and the structure in two places. So, if we go back here, now we need to define a material, and usually such a structure is made of ASTM A36 steel. And now we need to define some points to apply the load. So if you start a sketch here on this face, and the first scenario we have is that, let's assume, we will apply the load right in the middle of this crane. So I need to snap to the midpoint here draw a center line and then I'll draw two circles and I will set this to 35 then select this circle this one and the center line and make symmetric and here you only need to place this distance and let it be 50 or even let's say 70 now, this represents the points of application of the load. Once done with these, we need to split these circles so we can apply the load there. 
So here you will find split line. As you saw, I kept the sketch selected and here I have the sketch and then you need to select the face to split. So I'll select this face, then hit OK. And now I have these two faces, which I can use in applying the load. Now, I'll activate SolidWorks add-ins. And from here, I'll find simulation. And here, click simulation, new study, and we will run a static analysis. Now we have these balls in yellow, which means this is a free end. So to solve this problem, we need to make sure that SOLIDWORKS recognizes all these structural elements as structural elements. So I have a doubt of this one. And here, if you click it, you can see it's not a structural element. Because if you open this, all the structural elements will have this shape. But this one is considered as a solid body. And that's why simply right click here and then treat as beam. Now the joints are recalculated and SOLIDWORKS recognizes these joints. Now we are ready to run the analysis. You need to go to fixtures, then fix geometry, make sure to select joint, and from here this will be fixed on the ground. Then for the external loads, First of all, we need to define the gravity load, which is in this direction. If you don't have it in this direction, it should be selected to a plane that is normal to the direction, which means if I remove this, I know the gravity should be this way down. So I'll select this one because it's normal to it. So when you select this one, you have it this way and here you just reverse it. After that, and here for the load, Right click here and select distributed mass and I will select joint then select this joint and this one and I want this to be 1000 kilograms then hit OK and then select create mesh and make sure to set these options then hit OK Now the mesh is ready, so select Run this study. Now let's go to Results and here define stress, then define stress plot. Select Beams. I want to render them, then hit OK. And here it's obvious that this structure can withstand this load. Because the maximum load we have is a 3.1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7 and the yield point of ASTM A36 is 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 8, which means this is safe. Now let's try to increase the load a little bit. And here set it to 1500. Then I still have the mesh. I will just run the analysis once again. And here this is still safe and it's still within the limits. Now a very important aspect to take into account here is the displacement. So here we have one millimeter of displacement and it occurs here. So basically this is safe and the sections we used are safe and here if you're interested in the result of the analysis on these plates since they are not uh, structural elements you can find them from here now if you're interested in analyzing this and not taking into account that they are a structural elements you can start a new study now i'll select a new study so static then hit ok And now open part two, open the cut list and open all of these menus. 
Now, I want to turn everything that is a structural element to a solid body. Treat as solid, and here, all of these will be treated as solid bodies. And the same is done here. Now, once done, SolidWorks doesn't recognize any of these to be a structural element. Now, for the fixture, select Fixed Geometry, and make sure to zoom in and to select these faces. Once done with the selection, hit OK. And then for the external loads, select the gravity. And we need to apply another load. Let's select distributed mass. And I'll select this circle and this one. And I want this to be 1000 kilograms. Then hit OK. Once done, let's see this. Now we don't have any problem with the mesh, so select run this study. And here we have the result. The maximum stress is 1.1. 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 8 which is still below the yield point and for now here let's change this to 1500 and then just run the analysis once again and here it says that the this part fails at this load so here we applied this load to these two circles and there we applied it to the joints and this is a main difference in calculating these values now let's try to change these so i'll open this split and instead of 35 i will set this to 50 and i will set this to 100 so this depends on the actual situation we have Now we need to remesh this one, then select Mesh and Run. And here, as you can see, the results were enhanced because we had a bigger area to apply the load on, which means the stress were better distributed and we have a distance between the two points of load application. So in reality, you need to know what exactly the situation is like here, you need to measure this distance, and we didn't include this angle, which is another way of distributing this load. So overall, this structure is safe, and it withstands at least 1,500 kilograms of load, and the displacement here is 1 millimeter, which is definitely within the acceptable limits. If we go back to static one, let's try to apply the load in a different location. For example here on these so for the distributed mass instead of these two joints i will use this one and this one then select mesh and run and here we go which means this structure is still safe even if the whole load was applied only here. For the displacement value, it's three, it's 0.3 millimeter, which is still acceptable. And in the description, I will put the link of this video so you can see how this guy fabricated this crane. Thanks for watching and see you in another video.